What's up, Wastelanders? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing great. You know I hope you are too. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Kiki B Plays Fallout 76. Finally, we have had some stunning technical issues over the last couple of weeks, but we're finally getting what should have been last week's video out. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build an amazing floating camp on top of this railroad bridge. This location is over next to the Golly Mine exit. If you don't have the Golly Mine exit discovered already, then you can just fast travel to Golly Mine and you can head on up the tracks from there and you'll find it. It's the only bridge after that. Um, so the thing that I really love about this bridge is that it's like super flat and super straight. It is the only bridge that I've found so far in the game that is like that and it makes it really really wonderful to build on. You do have to be a little bit precise about placing your foundations, but once you've got those lined up properly, you are good to go. So yeah, you're going to want to first put a foundation down over here on the side. And this is on the mine exit end of the bridge that we're sort of starting or build from. And it might take you a couple of tries to get it lined up just right, but when you have it, as you can see, you'll be able to lay the foundations all the way across the bridge and they'll be um, lined up totally straight down the middle. If you haven't got it perfectly straight, then just check uh, that you can actually place walls on both sides of the foundations going all the way down the bridge. Uh, it doesn't have to be like perfectly, perfectly straight to work. So if you're a little bit off, it will usually still work fine. But just double check before you actually get started building and then find out that you can't actually place walls all the way down and then you're stuck redoing it again. Anyway, so now we're just gonna throw down some walls um, and you notice that I started in a little bit from the end of the bridge. I'm leaving that last foundation piece at each end of the bridge as a sort of um, porch entryway thing. And I'm putting down some brotherhood walls. Obviously, as always, I start with doorways because those are the easiest to work with and then I can remove floors and do things and move stuff around as much as I need. So I'm dividing this into three rooms. So you're gonna have a one by two room at each end and then a one by four in the middle. So we're gonna wanna put in our floating stairs in a minute that are gonna go up to the, the sleeping area, sort of little loft thing up here. Um, before we do that, we need to put in at least this one roof here um, and I'm going to go ahead and put in one at the other end and just go ahead and destroy both of them at once to get that over with. It makes it a little easier later on. But anyway, we do have to put in that roof down there first. If you try to pop it in over a staircase with the way we're putting the stairs in, it thinks it's intersecting and it just won't let you. Anyway, stack up your, your tables and suitcases. Flamethrower those roofs on each end. Just gonna slide these out of the way so that I can totally forget they're there later. And now I'm just showing you, did this bit wrong, but now we're gonna do it correctly. Uh, so we have to go in on the third one from the end. And we need to put in a half walkway, a corner, a quarter, and a half again. And that will get us so that we have a staircase on the side that is half a floor away from uh, this doorway wall here. And now we just snap our stairs to it and remove the catwalks. And that's how we're gonna get up into the little sleeping loft. And put that back so that I can go ahead and replace the walls. So we need to put something up here for our little sleeping loft and obviously um, we can't snap a floor to this staircase the way it is. So we're gonna have to do some weird trickery. Um, 
and also because the space between the end of the staircase and the walls at the end of this room is two and a half floor tiles, uh, we're gonna have to do some odd stuff to get this to work. First I need to remember that I actually have to remove this floor. Um, and then I can pop up a wall like this that's offset by half so it's in essentially in the middle of that floor piece. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use a flat roof here. And if the game will let me, I will snap it up here to this uh, floating wall, and it will. So then I can put uh, a roof back here. So this is the beginning of our floor now. I hope it's starting to make a little bit more sense uh, now that you can see it. So you need to change this to any of the other shapes of roof, basically, before you can get rid of the wall. So now we've got two slanted roofs, and uh, the easiest way to do this would be to remember that I still had my little setup for the flamethrower trap in the other room, but I forgot it, so I'm going to set it up again. And destroy this roof. And now I can add another roof piece at the end, which will overlap this one by a half. And we've got that flickery bit there, but that's actually going to be completely hidden in a really nice way in just a little bit. For now we can replace this floor. And I'm just going to put down a wall here. And you want to pay attention to the direction that that wall faces. You want it to face with the what would be the wallpapered side toward the stairs. so that you can put down a half wall like this and then you can wallpaper that or do whatever it is that you want with it later. And we can repair that little piece of roof now. And we're just going to finish building up the walls uh, in our little loft. Okay, now I want to create a skylight here, and I want it to have the look of being like opened, like that it's hinged. So I'm going to go ahead and use a flat roof here, which means uh, snapping a half wall up here temporarily, then putting the slanted one back down. So now it looks like it's, it's hinged open there. And this would look silly if it were just floating in midair, in my opinion. So we want something that will kind of prop it up and hold it in place. So we're going to be first making this weird little blueprint. And here's how to make it. This is a super simple blueprint and it's going to do amazing, miraculous things for you. So stack up two of these short columns, snap them to a foundation because they have to be snapped to something. And then take one of these little rugs and just kind of just edge it in there so that it's overlapping the bottom of the column a little bit. You can only overlap it by a very small amount, but that's all you need. Then blueprint the rug and the two column pieces together, which creates this lovely little blueprint. And this will allow you to place those metal columns anywhere. So now I can store that one, and if I just go down under here, then I can snap uh, another half column down to the underside of that one. And these will snap through roofs and, and floors and all kinds of things, so you can really use them in a lot of interesting and creative ways. So I hope you have fun with that. 
But yeah, now it looks like it's actually held up and held open by this column. So I'm going to put in the rest of the roofs. First I want a little overhanging roof on each end. So I have to put one on the inside so that I can snap one on the outside like that. And once you've got one snapped on the outside, you can just remove the inner roof piece. And now I want some of these little, um, I don't even know what you call these, the little pointy roofs anyway. So here's what the roof line of the finished building is going to look like. It just gives the structure some nice variety and it's, yeah, it adds a little visual interest to it. Also, um, I am using the Brotherhood walls on the small rooms on the ends, but if you don't have those, you can just use warehouse walls. Or you could even, if you really wanted to, use barn walls for the whole structure, and that would look kind of cute. It matches really well with the, with the bridge and kind of reminds me of one of those like old, like, antique covered bridges or something. Anyway, now it's time to put in doors because we've got to do that before we remove the floors here. Yeah, I am going to be using the elevator secret doors for this. But at this point we have got our structure done. So you can go ahead and take out all those floors. I would leave that one, that first foundation piece that you put down, I would leave that in place in case you need to go back in afterwards and fix something, change something, do something, whatever. Um, and that will give you the chance to do that. Now I'm just replacing the walls with the ones that I actually want and replacing the doors here. Sliding doors are really annoying in this game. So now you can see what that's actually going to look like on the side. I used the, the square windows on the Brotherhood wall sections and yeah and went with some windowed pieces in the center room. All right, now we're going to use our fancy little column blueprint again because we want some columns actually holding up this roof. So if you place those down and then you just store the rugs and the upper column, then afterwards you will be able to snap a full length column underneath them, no problem. And you don't actually have to store those before you place the other column. I just do it because it saves on some materials. Now we can remove those and that's what that sort of porch area is going to look like. By the way, shout out to Mr. Church, who I originally learned this blueprint from. It has been invaluable in so many builds. Okay, we're almost done with all of the actual like structural stuff, so now I need a place to put some power because I do want to power this one. Um, so I'm actually just going to sort of tuck this little generator shed up under the bridge. And this is also going to allow me to wire the whole structure really, really neatly and easily. I'm going to use steel walls for this because they are the most durable. And I'm going to go ahead and stack a bunch of these small vault tech generators in here. Now I am using a bunch because there's a stream running under this bridge and I want to put some industrial water purifiers down there. But if you're not using any water purifiers or anything else that needs much power, then you only need one of these. Also, if you don't have the prototype generators like these, I personally love these because they're small and they make absolutely no sound and they don't spew smoke and all of that stuff. Um, then you could always, if you don't like using the normal small generator because of the noise and the smoke, you could always use a scavenged solar panel and put it somewhere on the side of the bridge maybe.
Anyway, so I'm just going to take my flamethrower, throw it down here, and destroy that wall, which is going to allow me to wire out across the bottom of the bridge while still keeping uh, the generators enclosed and protected. Now actually getting conduits and connecting them underneath here is a little tricky because there's not really much space to stand. So in a second here I'm actually going to build a sort of scaffolding thing to stand on while I work on this. So there we go. Now we can easily connect these wires and conduits and things. And you want to space them, I don't know, about two, two and a half uh, floor tiles apart. I think I used five, if I counted correctly, to do the entire thing, and that was more than enough. Now we can replace that, as you can see the wire just goes right through it with no problems. And we can finish enclosing uh, the generator shed. And now that's done, now your whole place will be wired for power. The only thing those conduits won't reach is the very peak of the roof in the center. But that's okay, because I didn't actually want to hang a light up there. You can always run another conduit up there if you really want. That gets a little complicated. All right, now here's a little problem that you're gonna run into uh, building really on just about any pre-existing structure. Certain objects, uh, when you place them down, they're going to snap up onto the roof or up above on something. You'll also have this sometimes in a building with uh, staircases if you try to place something under a staircase. But what you can do to prevent this is just take that object, that single object, and blueprint it by itself, and then store it, and you'll go ahead and go in and place the blueprinted version of it, and it will work just fine. You can use this, like I said, to place things under stairs. You can use it to put things on top of like the patio tables with the umbrellas sometimes, although it doesn't work with everything, uh, but it will work with some objects that just wouldn't work at all before. If you try to place something under these stairs, it's going to pop up onto the top like that. So again, you just blueprint it. I just keep one called zero for doing these like random blueprints. Store it and place the blueprint. And there you go. This will also work under the big one by two staircases where we all know things love to pop up on the top under like the floor ends of them, which is so annoying. All right, now down here at the end on the mine exit end, there's a large part of the bridge where it will not let you properly place things down. It's like there's just this invisible box over it all or something. So what you can do to fix that, it's really, really simple. Take a small rug like this, put it down in the middle of the room, and then I'm just using these vault rubber utility mat things, and they fit well in the space, like as in physically the dimensions of them. And then you'll just yeah put two of these over that little rug and they will actually sink down below the rails. Now, when you go to place things on top of this, it will actually sink those down to the level of the rugs, which if you have a merged object like this, that means that the object that you've merged down in will actually pop up slightly. It's similar to floating things with the camp module. So then you want to take that, you want to merge it down a little bit lower. Then you actually want it to be about three clicks on the pressure plate lower. And 
And now when you take that and you place that again, um, the cabinet will pop down to the level of the rug. And now you've got a very nicely sunk in uh, workbench. Also down at the other end where you can just build and place things normally later, I went back in and put down rugs under the objects that I wanted to place down which actually does the same trick as in the other end. It makes them sink down to the actual bridge level or to the rug level, I guess. So if you don't want your cabinets and things to be sort of floating on top of the rails, that's how you can fix that. All right, and lastly, um, again, down at the, the mine exit end of the bridge, I wanted to place some things outside here on the little porch area. And in order to do that, I actually had to put, I had to layer two rugs like this um, because that second rug is actually in a spot where you can't place things. After I put these layered rugs down, um, it allowed me to put whatever I wanted on top of them. So let's take a look at the finished thing. Fetch's house over there and I still have not removed that foundation. I like to keep it just in case I need it for something later. Um, the finished structure looks so cool the way it's just like tucked really neatly onto the bridge like that. And over here on top of those rugs that I placed down uh, I've made a little sort of concession stand area which is super super cute. And you can take the the Nuka-Cola display rack like that and just sink it down into a table or a shelf or whatever and it looks, in my opinion, cooler than it does with legs underneath it. Um, anyway, so this is my finished one of my workshop areas. And this is another merge trick, just using the terminal that's under the power connectors tab and merging it down into one of these cabinets. Now heading up the stairs into our little bedroom area. This is so cozy and I love it with the glass roofs, but obviously if you don't have the glass roofs, and I know a lot of people don't, and they love to tell me, oh, I wish I had the glass walls, and I feel very sad for you guys, honestly. I really hope they'll bring them to the Atomic Shop soon. But if you don't have the glass roofs, then you can just use a regular roof and also have it propped open like that if you want. Um, and that would still be really cool to have like sort of some ventilation uh, going through your bedroom area. Also, uh, I forgot to mention earlier, this bridge is a spot where this alcoholic NPC spawns, so he'll come and sit on your couch and drink your beer. Um, it's kind of like having a husband, except this one, if you shoot him, nobody's really going to blink an eye at it. Anyway, uh, this is our little living area and kitchen. I love these kitchen cabinets and uh, I cannot take credit for the idea myself. Shout out goes to someone on Reddit and I have linked their original post um, in the description. So go ahead and check them out. They do some really, really cool stuff. And yeah, the second workshop area with the other workbenches in it. I do not have a power armor station anywhere here because I just don't use power armor. And I really like having the um, punch card machine and the scrap box sunken into a cabinet like that. It's cool. Um, so yeah, and here's just a vending machine and a bench. Now, if you place your camp module right there, you will spawn just over on that little rise uh, over by the tracks. 
So it's a pretty good spawn location there. And down here, um, yeah, got my water purifiers. You also have a lot of space for crops if you want. And also notice um, in the upper right corner there, that's, that's all the budget that this entire build takes. It's fully decorated, so you have plenty of space left for things like crops or uh, extra purifiers or whatever it is that you might need. That's it from me today, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Leave me a comment if there's anything that you would like to see in a future build or any questions that you have. Always happy to answer them, provided I can. And as always, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.